I started out, when I, when I was eight years old, my, my uncle Ori got me a plastic m and &E trumpet for Christmas. I'd never touched an instrument before in my life. And I pulled it out of the box and I went and played taps. I'd never touched an instrument before. And I played taps. I was amazed. I, I, I played Reveille after that. I thought, I felt like I was coming home. I've always wanted to be a musician. I have zero regret for anything. Um, probably been in 60 different bands over the last 49 years. And uh, met a lot of people over, over my time. Um, I went out with a, a woman named Olivia Newton-John for a couple of years. I don't know if you know who she is. Your mom or dad might. Your grandma and grandpa will for sure. And uh, I was out with her for uh, about two years. Met a whole lot of people. Um, most of them were really nice, I, I, surprisingly. You know, the, the stars, they were really nice. There was a couple who weren't. But for the most part, they were really nice. I. Uh, I auditioned for a group called Foreigner once, and I came in third, and they took two keyboard players, so I just missed it. But a couple of months after I auditioned, in, you know, I went out to New York and auditioned, and a couple of months after, the bass player, Rick Wills, called me up. He says, yeah, Greg, this is Rick Wills from Foreigner. We're playing in St. Paul tonight. Would you like to come to the show and get a backstage pass and everything? And I said, I'm sorry, I'm working uh, out in Hopkins. He said, oh, would a limo driver know where it is? And I said, well, tell him to drive out cross town to Shady Oak Road and go north. So I got to work that night. We had a group called Xerox, live duplication of radio rock. So we played all the rock that was on the radio. And uh, it was a blizzard that night. And there was eight people in the club. Well. Rick Wills and the drummer for Foreigner and a couple other guys, they showed up. And uh, there was a big bank of phones out in the, in the bowling alley, about eight of them. All eight of the people that were there got on the phone. They, get down here, Foreigner's here. Get down here, Foreigner's here. Get down here, Foreigner's here. Within 30 minutes, the place was packed. And uh, we probably did six Foreigner songs. We got to do them with their bass player and drummer. They came up and played with us, and they were great guys. But the business has changed so much from when I was, when I was young, when I was your age. Believe it or not, I was in eighth grade once. I really was. And uh, the business has changed so much. I, I always say I've been in a business I hate for 49 years doing what I love because I the business has, has just gotten so cutthroat. I have a good friend who, uh, when he recorded his third album, I still call them albums and records. When he recorded his third album, he went out to New York to shop it. And uh, a guy said, Pat, Pat, you're an artist, Pat. We just don't sign artists. You know, you know that group Chubbawamba? I get knocked down, but I get up again. No, they're never going to let me keep me down. He said, we make more money off of one hit wonders like that. We don't care if they ever do another record. And they'll probably play county fairs for the rest of their life, playing their one hit. But it's a life, and they'll probably love it. I've done a lot of different things, commercial work, uh, weddings, everything. And what I learned when I did weddings was that even grandma has a stairway to heaven. Music is about connection. It's about connecting with people. Um, grandma, at a wedding, she wants to hear something from her era. 
be, not because of the song, but because of what it reminds her of. It reminds her of when she was 17. Somebody else might want to hear something by Metallica because it reminds them of when they're 17. And somebody might hear some, want to hear some Bruno Mars, and they probably are 17. But it's all about connection to me. Um, since 2005, I ceased to define myself as a musician because I found that too many times over the years, uh, I would use that I was, uh, for a, a, a reason for bad behavior. I'd do something and then somebody would say, hey, you shouldn't do that. I'd say, oh, well, I'm a musician. You know, you know that's what we do. In 2005, I, I ceased to be a musician and I became a human being who plays music. And it kind of changed my life there. I, uh, people ask me, how'd you become a musician, Greg? And I tell them, well, when I was in high school, I went to my guidance counselor and my guidance counselor said, well, Greg, what do you want to do? Here's, here's some things here. Well, look, you could be a lawyer. You could make 150 K a year or you could be a doctor and make 250 K a year. Oh, here's one. You could be a musician and make 20 K a year for the rest of your life. I said, that's for me. So, I, I've always wanted to be a musician. In my high school yearbook, it said that uh, I wanted to be a pop musician. That really didn't work out because I always wanted to explore things. And pop music doesn't really want to explore new things. They more want to just do what's status quo right now. So I, I, I did music that was not necessarily real commercial. And, uh, sorry, I'm just keeping track of my time. I was asked, why is music important to me? It's important to me because it opened up the whole world as a music box. Birds tweeting back and forth. They're doing rhythm. Um, there's, a, there's a video on the internet of this, this old Norwegian guy and he's playing a fiddle out in the middle of a field and he's got a tractor. He starts his tractor up and it's going It's his drums. He uses that as his rhythm and he plays along with it out in the middle of a field somewhere in Norway. Music is everywhere. It's in nature. It's in machinery. It's everywhere. And uh, I, I got an appreciation for, or I began to realize, I guess, that there's only two kinds of music for me. There's two kinds of music, good and bad. There's music I like, and there's music I don't. And it doesn't matter what style it is. There's music in every style that I can find that I like. I, uh, I was at the fair years ago, the Minnesota State Fair, and I, I'm not a big old-time music, even though I'm an old-time guy, I'm not a big old-time music fan. But I saw these two old guys that were probably 80 years old, and they both had acoustic guitars, and they're sitting there playing, and they're playing old-time music. But they were really good. I mean, they were good players. So I was watching these guys and I was starting to get an appreciation and I started to think, these guys have probably been playing together on a porch somewhere since they were 12 years old. And they just, they had a, a, they had a rapport between them that was just so, so seamless and so casual, but yet so professional. I was really impressed. So I came to realize that there really is only two kinds of music for me. There's good music and there's bad music. Um, my stepson is a, an underground hip-hop artist, and uh, he told me that Mally was dope. He said, oh yeah, Mally's dope. He's going to be speaking next. He said, yeah, he's dope. And uh, when I first met Jabril, he was probably 10. He's 19 now. And he, he was playing all this gangster rap, and I wasn't, I wasn't into it because I... 
I didn't have anything in common with, you know, bling and hoes and I don't know, you know, what do I want to listen to that for? But he started to play some other stuff. He started to play some Akon. Uh, he started to play some Tech 9. He started to play Atmosphere, Brother Ali. And a lot of things that perked up my ear and I said, wow, that's pretty good. Guys are talking about something real. They're not just talking about how much money they're going to make and how much, you know, how many women they're going to get or this or that. They're talking about real things, you know, real uh, problems in their neighborhood, problems in how they're growing up. And so I started to listen and I listened a little closer and got a new appreciation for, for uh, rap that I didn't have before. Matter of fact, on my, my second CD, I, I have a song that Jabril kind of inspired me to write. And uh, my oldest son said, uh, what are you going to rap now, Dad? Uh. Yeah, my oldest son sounds like Beavis or Butthead. And, uh, and I said, no, at my age, it's called spoken word. So I have a, a song that I do spoken word. And uh, they also asked me how it affects my life. Music keeps me young because I can appreciate music that is done by somebody who's 15 or 50. I don't care. If it's good, I like it. I've, I've heard stuff on the radio that has moved me, and it's by people that are your age. And I've heard stuff by people that are older than me, and it's moved me. So it really doesn't matter to me what kind of music it is or how old the people are that, are that are making it. It doesn't really matter. Music cuts across all lines, all everything. Music, it's magic. But that being said, what is making it? What would be making it to you uh, in the music business if you were to say, okay, I'm gonna make it in the music business? What, what would that be to you? Anything? No? Anybody have an idea what making it would be? Being happy, and being happy with the music that I make and making other people happy with the music. That's a great answer. For me, making it was being able to go into a grocery store and buy anything I want and not have to get the generic kind and not even have to look at the price, I can go, oh boy, do those raspberries look good. And I put them in my cart. I can do that now. I couldn't do that years ago. Before I was buying old fruit and I was buying used this and I was buying generic butter. I was getting generic food. But now I don't do that anymore. I can buy whatever I want in a, in a, in a uh, grocery store. To me, that's making it. I, uh, I had some close, close encounters. Um, Bob Dylan recorded a record years ago called Blood on the Tracks, and he recorded half of it in New York City. He recorded the other half in Minneapolis, Minnesota, using five local unknown musicians. I was fortunate enough to be one of those five local unknown musicians, and I still am today, local and unknown. But I'm happy. And that, like you said, I'm happy. I'm happy with the music I make. I, I still record. I still play. Um, and I'm happy doing it. I have a, a, I wanted to ask for four notes. Can, can you give me a note, any note? E? Okay, E? Anybody else? You, any note? What's that? I'm, I, sorry. D. E and D. Now, is that up to D or down to D? Whatever you want. See, we're going to write a song right now. Up to D. So we're going E to up to D. Now, how about another note? You. Yeah, 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 you. The guy looking around. F. 
up to F or down to F? Down. One more note. How about you? Yeah, you. They can be sharps and flats, too. I don't care. A. A. Up or down to A? Up. So, if we have that, can make up anything, whatever's in your head, musically. You can make it up. We had a band once. It was a, a jazz fusion band. And we had something called the hat when we were writing, rehearsing. We would come to a section where we'd have an A section and a B section, but we didn't know how we were going to get from the A section to the B section. And we'd try and we'd say, well, how are we going to get from the A section to B section? And then somebody would say, get the hat. And we'd get the hat. There was two hats. There was a rhythm hat and there was a note hat. The note hat had all the 12 notes with arrows. 12 notes with arrows going up, 12 notes with arrows going down. And the rhythm hat had rhythm in it. So we would pull something out. Oh, it's a, it's a B. And it's a quarter note. So we'd play a B quarter note. And then we'd, we'd keep pulling out things and we'd get these weird we'd get these weird little things that would tie these two sections together. And uh, and that's how we would uh, finish the song, just by pure happenstance, just by pulling something out of a hat. And it would, it would work for some reason. I wanted to play, before I'm done, I wanted to play one song. I'm sorry there's not a sustain pedal. It might sound funny. But this is a song I wrote that my producer, it brought him to tears. And I like making my producer cry. I don't know why, but I did. Hush, don't try to speak right now. Just listen, try with all your might to find that place inside that frightens you, you know it all too well. I just want to hold you close in my heart Why is it so hard for me You trusted me before my dear But now you cannot see See me as I am I'm a music man Trying to follow my destiny Take me as I am Just a music man 
I only want to be all I'll be But I didn't choose music, music chose me I tried to ignore the science for too long I, maybe the sun would find me hiding in the shadows pretending to be blind this is who I am just a music man I only wish I had more to give Giving all is hard for a music man I only want to be all I'll be But I didn't find music, music found me I can't turn around again to find you You'll just have to come to me If you really want to be here Then love will set you free Take me as I am Just a music man I only trying to find my way Seeing all is hard for a music man I only want to be all I'll be But I didn't choose music, music chose me No, I didn't find music Music found me No, I never made music Music made me I'm a music man And Thank you all very much There's a guy going to come up Next, Mally's going to come up here and he's going to uh, talk about some things that you can probably relate to a lot. So thank you all very much. Have a great day. Our mission is to supply students and classrooms with the instruments and the tools they need to have successful art and music programs. We are lean, entrepreneurial, nonprofit organizations looking to make a big social impact. And we find that when we pool our resources together, we can get a lot more done. We can have a greater impact and provide music education to more students in our state and perhaps throughout the country. Instruments are going to help the kids be able to have their own instrument so that they don't have to share, be able to take them home, get practice time in. Really our goal is to make sure that every kid has access to musical instruments. A lot of times it takes money to have a musical instrument, to take lessons, and to be a part of a music program. And we want to make sure that there are no economic boundaries, that every child has the opportunity to experience music.